All right, welcome to our video on visualizing a piecewise function. And here we're going to graph out a piecewise function. We're going to make it up, and then we're going to apply it and compound it within other functions as well to get a sense of just you know how these things relate to each other. So again, a piecewise function just says that based on what your input is, right? You can have all sorts of inputs into your function, but based on the input, you'll get a different kind of output, right? It really depends on what you plug into the equation. So here if we have our x and our y axis, or our f of x axis, same thing, we can think of x as the inputs, and y here as the, as the outputs. So now we're going to kind of make up a function and then work with it. Let's say our function is defined by a point where you plug in a 1 for an input, right, let's establish you're going to plug in a 1, and then when you plug 1 in you get a 2. So here's 2. So you get a point, 1, 2. And what you might see written is that f of 1 equals 2. This just means plug 1 into this function and you get a 2. What else can we say? Well, let's, we're making this up, so let's plug in a 2 now. When you plug a 2 in, what do we want to get? Well, it's piecewise, so it doesn't have to be consistent. It could be anything you want. Let's say when you plug a 2 in, you get a 0. So that means you get a point down here. 2, 0. What about f of, I don't know, 4? Let's skip around. When you get an f of 4, let's say you also get a 0. Right? So here's 3, 4. Okay. So let's go the other way now. What about f of 0? Well, when you get f of 0, let's say you also get a 2. So at 0, you get a 2. So you get a point here, 0, 2. And if you plug in a negative number, like negative 1, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say you get a 4. So that means at negative 1, you're going to go all the way up here, 3, right, 3, 4. You get a point up here. So that's, that's negative 1, 4. Now we've created a piecewise function, because on this interval, if we assume that there's a, a constant relationship here, our function's decreasing, right? These two points connect. On this interval right here, part of the same function, our interval rate of change is changing. It's now horizontal. Here, it's decreasing again, maybe at a different rate. And here, it seems to be, between these two points, remaining the same. So visually, a piecewise function, right, depending on where you're at, and let me just highlight these a little bit more, depending on what interval you're at or what your inputs are, you're going to get different types of values based on different relationships. Each of these lines has, has a different slope. They each have a different relationship between your x and y values. This is the basic, I think, fundamental idea of a, of a piecewise function, that the slope is changing or the relationship between x and y is changing based on your input. So I'm just trying to highlight these. So we can, we can work with this by then looking at other functions and saying, okay, how are those functions related to this? So we can make that up as well. Let's just have fun with this. g of x, let's have it equal, I don't know, 2 times f of x plus f of x squared. So squared. And then let's throw a third function in there. Let's say you have h of x. And that will equal, well, let's say 2x cubed plus 3x. Um, and then you can compound these functions and ask something fun like, okay, what is h of g of negative 1? Okay? So here, what do we do? Well, we want to evaluate g of negative 1 first. We always start there in these compounded functions. And that means we're going to plug it in here, g of negative 1. Well, g of negative 1 is going to equal 2 times f of x, and x is negative 1, so it's 2 times f times negative 1, excuse me, 2 times f of negative 1, plus f of negative 1 squared. So what is f of negative 1? Well, that might seem complicated, but we already defined that based on the picture. So f of negative 1 is 4. So really, this just means 2 times 4 plus, well, 4 squared. 2 times 4 is 8, 4 squared is 16, add them up, you get 24. So really, g of negative 1 ends up equaling 24. So h is going to be equal to, well, h is, h is, we don't know yet, but it's going to be h of 24. Now we plug 24 into h. 
So you get 2 times 24 cubed plus 3 times 24. I'm just plugging into this equation for x. So what's 24 cubed? Let's figure that out quickly. I'm running out of room here. 24 times 24 times 24. 13,824. So this is 13,824. And we're going to double that times 2. Let's go back to our calculator. Times 2. 27,648. 27,000. 648 plus, well, 3 times 24 is just 72. So we're adding 72, and we get our final answer. 27,000, 27,720. I should have picked smaller numbers there, sorry. So all you're doing, again, you're, you're defining a function based on a picture, and they might actually start by giving you this image and saying, well, what is f of 1 or f of 2 or f of whatever? To figure it out, for f of 1, you just look at 1 and find the height of the graph. If they said, what's f of negative 1, go to negative 1, the input, and look at the height of the graph. Then you can fill these numbers in and answer any other question they throw at you with other compounded functions. All right, hope this helped.